My buddies call me Frosten. I was a big bass guide in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina, upstate South Carolina, and North Georgia for over a decade. I sold my guide business, my tackle shop, my boat service center, and my real estate for my new venture, fishtips.com. Now my family and I travel the country helping fishing guides, pro anglers, and influencers from all corners of the U.S. catching all different species, create content, and scale their businesses digitally on fishtips.com. Join us on this wild adventure. All right, before we get started, uh, I want to hear your guys' opinions. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear everything down in the comment thread below. Uh, I think this is a very, very interesting topic. A lot of passionate people on both sides of the spectrum. So I would love to hear your comments. And if you enjoy the video today, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, without further ado, let's get after this video welcome back to the channel i hope you are doing well and i am really excited for you tuning in to this video today i want to talk about everything bass fishing industry related really fishing industry in general and some of you might be wondering what gives you authority to be talking about this industry uh today and the reality is i've started a collegiate fishing team uh, golly, 12 years ago, um, I was heavily involved in collegiate fishing. That morphed into a very successful uh, guide business, tackle shop, boat service center that I just exited. I sold for quite a bit of money uh, very recently. I have founded another company in the industry that is honestly making waves, and we partner with guides. We partner with professional anglers. We partner with influencer. Some may consider me an influencer. I feel like I'm just somebody that likes to document fishing and share my heart about fishing. Um, you know, but there's really a lot of things, right? I, I, so I've started a business in the industry. I've been a guide in the industry. I've sold a tackle shop in the industry. I was very heavily involved with retail sales, marketing. I partner with companies now uh, in the industry. I create commercials for, I mean, i have been engrossed in this industry. So what I'm saying is I have had an eye at every level of this industry. I can tell you lots of things and I wanna get into really the thumbnail. It's the death of Bassmaster, Major League Fishing, and NPFL. Uh, I want you to stick with me through this whole video because we're, we're going on a path and I'm really drawing out, there's so many things intertwined with where the industry is. Uh, there was just the big ASA, American Sport Fist Association conference out in San Diego. And they said, man, the industry shrunk by 13 million people last year. 13 million people in the United States stopped fishing. And forever and ever, they wanted to grow the sport and grow the sport. And a lot of that was because that money would come back to fisheries, resources, improve lakes, uh, grow what, you know, the sport of fishing, whether it's saltwater, inshore, bass fishing. Uh, but specifically, I know this narrative was thrown down our throats in the bass fishing industry because bass are. They, they can be done all across the country from each corner of the United States, uh, excluding Alaska, but from Washington all the way up to Maine, as southwest as California, all the way down to Florida. Bass fishing is the biggest segment of the market in the fishing industry. I wanted to really put two things, two truths, okay? The first truth is what is fishing? Fishing is a conservative pastime meant to be passed down to generations. Uh, I'm not the only person that thinks that. Here's another prominent guide, Ronnie Kelly on Lake Fork, that thinks that. I don't want it to become a real sport because I know what that looks like. And mm. you are starting to get a glimpse of it. I don't want it to become more than fishing. It's not supposed to. We're catching live animals and releasing them. All we're doing is practicing a tradition of survival. So... We don't forget. That's it. That's the only reason we're doing this. It's the same as hunting. We don't have to hunt. Why are we hunting, dog? I can go to Walmart. They got more beef than I can kill in my lifetime. So it is a conservative pastime meant to be passed down. So it's done through education. Another truth that I want to talk about is, this is just a truth, and you can speak for this. People only care about themselves. 
All right. So I, I want you, we're going to kind of orchestrate this whole thought together. Thought, uh, you can call it opinion. A lot of it's fact. I've got facts. I got my laptop right here. Here's the reality of the situation. If fishing is a conservative pastime meant to be passed down, it is encompassed in education um and as a salesperson in the industry right i've been in sales my entire life in this industry that's how you make it in the industry you have to create value through selling whether it's tackle equipment whatever it looks like sales runs the industry all right so i want to do that little introduction in two truths we're going to segment to something else and we're, i'm just putting points together and everything's going to come to a crescendo so on to the next point bass fishing tournaments started in the late 1960s i believe bass master was founded in 1967. So from 1967 through the 70s, 80s, 90s, Bass Angler Sportsman Society was the prominent uh, fishing tournament organization. And it was great. They had grassroots level, semi-professional level, and professional level. Well, in 2001, ESPN, Entertainment Sports Partnership Net, whatever it is, bought Bassmaster and they created ESPN Outdoors. I don't know if you remember this. There was everything from bass fishing. I remember even as a kid watching hunting on ESPN and I remember watching like the lumberjack games. ESPN bought Bassmaster in 2001 for millions, I mean millions of dollars. That's the only figure I couldn't find on the internet. But ESPN bought that with the hopes of fandom, fanship, okay? ESPN is able to grow because it's sports entertainment and a lot of people want to be entertained. Well, if bass fishing is a sport like Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, these other things, ESPN wanted to grow it. They wanted a return on investment. They bought bass for, I'm saying quite a bit, a lot of money. And just like these other sports, they wanted to bring eyeballs to it in order to bring more revenue to it by through sales, right? Advertising, marketing, uh, non-endemic money. Now, when I say the word non-endemic, and the word endemic means within the industry, non-endemic means outside of the industry. So ESPN had grown or helped grow a lot of these sports organizations, Major League Baseball, NBA, uh, National Football League, NFL. They had done that and they said, oh my gosh, here is an opportunity for this kind of unique outdoors market because there are obviously outdoorsmen that care about uh, sports. I care about Major League Baseball. I've got tons of friends that are hardcore fishermen that love football, NBA, whatever. But they looked at it and they said, hey, we could blow up this unique outdoor space and help grow this industry. So ESPN started airing their tournaments on, if you guys remember ESPN2 in the mornings, they were airing the Bassmaster Classic. There was ton of non-endemic money in the sport. I mean, I remember John Cruz had an AutoZone sponsorship uh, I mean, just Toyota entered the space. There was a lot of different companies that were pouring money into the fishing industry and the payouts were really good. If you won the Bassmaster Classic, it was a half million dollars. And this was back in the early 2000s, which probably now with inflation, everything's probably the equivalent of like a million bucks. But, you know, they tournaments were paying out $100,000 back then everything and what was really unique there was a lot of money being flushed in the industry because there was a lot of viewership in bass fishing and it was really forced viewership so how it works is tv networks like espn whatever they acquired bassmaster but a lot of times uh smaller organizations would buy airtime well since espn owned the airtime they would sell that airtime and eyeballs as advertising revenue to other people well after a while they realized that wow Fishing is not drawing the eyeballs that we thought it was. They were spending a ton of money to try to create a ton of viewership to sell advertising and get non-endemic outside of the industry money into the sport of bass fishing. Well, what ended up happening in 2010, ESPN said, we are done. We are losing so much money in bass fishing because there's not enough fandom. We've tried to grow the sport. There's not enough fans. So here's the deal. If you look at other major league sports, like look at these follower counts. Boom. This is major league baseball. This is the NFL. This is the NBA. Okay. Time out. Here's Bassmaster. All right. So these other 
professional sports leagues have monster followings. And by the way, all of the sports teams within that honestly have more followers than the organization themselves, except maybe the NBA and the NFL. But I know Major League Baseball for sure. But you think about this. Bass fishing does not have the fandom or the followers or the viewership that these other sports have. It's just that simple. Bassmaster got sold back to the McKinnis family, and uh, uh, and part of that was an investor group. They were like, all right, here's the deal. Uh, we just need to kind of figure out what we're doing. Well, during this whole deal, th this whole thing is based on cable television. I want you guys to hear this. ESPN, everyone has ESPN. It doesn't matter the cable television package. So you forced viewership if you wanted to watch the outdoors. Well, within cable television, there was the Outdoor Network. Now, Boyd Duckett founded Major League Fishing, and it was this cool, very suspenseful product to air on the Outdoor Network. Once again, cable television. Now, I will say, cable television is still the predominant means of viewership within media across the board really late 2000s into the early 2000s teens tens you know 2010 11 12 the bulk of viewership is still cable television so there's the outdoor network boy duckett has this interesting along with the other guys kevin van dam uh gary klein there's a bunch of these pros that had an idea for major league fishing well once again so major league fishing was buying airtime for the outdoor network they were literally playing all of their airing all of their tournaments and everything and if you were an outdoorsman you were forced to watch the outdoor network so the viewership was absolutely incredible um you know they major league fishing could go to uh non-endemic companies and say hey look at all of our viewership look at our numbers it's off the chain you got to give us money to advertise because we are a viable source an efficient source for your ad dollars and you'll get a good return on investment so here we go major league fishing's promising this everything's rock and rolling the bass master and major league fishing split so this is a one deal that is a death to the industry you have Major League Baseball. Is there any other competing professional league with Major League Baseball? The answer is no. You have the NFL, National Football League. Is there any competition with major, do the be, are there the best football players, do they play in another league? No, they don't play in the, I couldn't even tell you, is it Arena Football League or... I, don't, I, I can't even tell you because I, I don't pay attention to it. But no, the best players play in the major leagues. The best players play in the NBA. The best players play in the NFL. So now you had the best fishermen on earth being split into two major professional leagues. So now, if you look at the followers for Bassmaster, Major League Fishing, I think it's 700,000, 500,000, whatever. But here's the deal. It all overlaps. Those are the same followers. It's not like if you're a fan for Bassmaster, you're not following Jacob Wheeler and all these guys over here or vice versa. It's overlapped. So you could add them together and say, oh, there's 1.2. But the reality is there's not. These are overlapped followers. All right. So now you've taken the sports league and you split them into two. So you've taken eyeballs and split them in two different ways. So viewership, once again, I'm thinking about viewership, ad revenue, non-endemic money being able to be pumped into the sport. Now that's not happening. All right, combine that with now, cable television is being phased out and you have streaming services. You have YouTube, you have YouTube TV, you have Roku, you've got Peacock, you've got Sling TV, you have all of these digital platforms. So people now want to watch what they want to watch. They're not being forced into watching cable television to be entertained. Now they can just pick up their remote and whatever they want to watch, they can watch. All right, so hear me out. As soon as that happened, not only did the viewership get split, and yeah, okay, they keep up with both, but here's the deal. People stopped choosing to participate in watching and viewing professional fishing because the eight-hour product of professional fishing isn't conducive for people to fit into their lifestyle because when people want to fish, guess what? It's a conservative pastime meant to be experienced and enjoyed. It's not entertainment. If people have eight hours to watch fishing, and they care about fishing at all, guess what? They don't want to watch you catch a fish. They want to go catch a fish. So this is part of the fundamental truth, right? People only care about themselves. So if people only care about themselves, yeah, they might want, so part of their caring might want to be entertained, 
but the reality is they want to be educated the if the whole foundation of fishing is based on education so if people only care about themselves and the whole idea is education where are they going to run to they are going to run to educational platforms check me out that's why youtube viewership's huge that's why companies and you look at this across the board i heard daiwa just cut a lot of marketing budget i work with daiwa uh, i've heard that i work with gill gill has i think i'm wearing a gill hat gill has budget cut a lot of things and where are they going to put their money they are putting their money in digital advertising so here's the reality of it a majority of people do not care about professional bass fishing there was 55 million license sales in 2023 of those people surveyed to the ASA, about 1 million of those people consider themselves hardcore tournament bass fishermen. Okay, as a percentage, that is less than 2% of the market. So professional tournament fishing, here's the deal. It's not getting viewership and eyeballs, which means non-endemic money is not being pumped into the sport. That means the only people that care about tournament fishing are tournament anglers, a little bit of entertainment, a little bit of people, and a few retailers that are within the hardcore tournament space. Now listen to this. What happens is all of your tournament anglers are fighting for the same dollars endemically, like within the industry, and now everything is consuming itself. It's literally cannibalism. The industry, because there's no growth, there's no non-endemic money coming in that helps the sport grow, now everything is cannibalizing itself. This is why Major League Fishing is getting cut down. This is why payouts haven't increased in Bassmaster. This is why you're not seeing monster non-endemic companies sponsor fishing. Now you could say, hey, Toyota's there, General Tire's there. Well, yeah, fishermen tow boats. I'm filming this on a boat. I need tires. Everybody needs tires. Chances are if you tow a boat, whatever, you have more tires than most people. You need to buy more tires than most people. If you have a tow truck for towing your boat, whatever, they are money spenders, right? A lot of the viewers of professional bass fishing are money spenders. But the reality is if they're money spenders and they have bass boats and they have trucks, they want to go out and fish, which means to them, education is more important than entertainment. So the only people that care about professional fishing are professional fishermen themselves. And here's the deal. People only care about themselves. Think about that. Tournament anglers, and I have tons of them, tons of friends. Some of my best friends are the biggest names in the industry. They are the ones that care about being the best. And there's nothing wrong with that. I encourage that. I think with every endeavor you do, you should desire to be the best. A lot of professional tournament anglers are the ones that care about professional tournament fishing. Thus, because they want to be the best and there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best. It just means it's your money that's going to be on the line. And that's where, like, you think about the industry, it cannot uphold within itself two, three professional tournament organizations, the NPFL, Major League Fishing, Bassmaster. It can only uphold one tournament organization. There's not enough viewership for it, okay? And then once again, if you do get non-endemic money, now I'm not saying, like, as a professional angler, there are people that want to sponsor you. Uh, they want to sponsor you just because they want to be a part of your story. I saw an awesome, awesome uh, post from Carl Jacobson saying, hey, I couldn't provide a whole lot of value for one of these companies, but they cared about me. They cared about my story and they wanted to be a part of it. And you can raise non-endemic money like that. If you have relationships and partnerships outside of the fishing industry, that is a total thing. But the reality is a majority of sponsors, non-endemic money, will not touch fishing because there's not enough viewership so the return on their investment is not there everybody is forced to pick from the same trees in the fishing industry and this is why your youtubers this is why a lot of companies period are starting to sponsor and work with youtubers and other people tiktokers and people who have reach true direct market reach within the industry if they have specific needs that need to be met to be cre to create value essentially right so let's say you know Daiwa reaches out to me and says hey 
we want to work with you. We're having trouble sell these products. Your viewers, we think, or I pitched, hey, my viewers are these people that will buy your products. They say, hey, we believe it and we want to see it. And I can show them my hours. I have hundreds of thousands of hours monthly watched on my channel because viewers watch it, right? So here's the deal. If people only care about themselves and the industry is a pastime, fishing is a pastime, conservative pastime meant to be passed down, the base is education. So if you are going to be an angler that creates revenue or has a successful business model, whether it's yourself or yourself as a business, whatever, you have to figure out how to intersect people's wants and desires with what you're providing. So here's the deal. There are professional fishermen that are like, hey, Bass Masters lied to us, Major League Fishing's lied to us. We were told if we made it here, we, we would flock. But the reality is, is if people only care about themselves and businesses only care about themselves, what value do you provide people? Because if they only care about themselves and you want to have a successful business, you have to figure out where your value intersects other people's caring about themselves, their personal wants and needs. So nobody is paying you to fish. Nobody's paying you. If they could pay you to fish, guess who they would pay to fish? They would pay themselves to fish. That is how it works. There are a lot of people in this industry. There's young tournament anglers, mid-level tournament anglers, and pros that are like, hey, pay me so I can fish. Brother, sister, hear me out. It does not work like that. You have to figure out how to create value for other companies and literally provide value to customers. You are the conduit to which companies and customers intersect. And if you only care about you, because that's a fundamental truth, and you don't care about others, you're not gonna grow. And by the way, this is why professional tournament fishing is dying, because you have pros that actually only care about their fishing addiction, which there's no problem with that. I'm a fishing addict too. But they're like, I want to be secretive. I want to, I don't want to tell, I don't want to do this. I'm going to do the bare minimum for my sponsors. And all of a sudden there's no education because once again, the industry's founded on education. There's very little education provided, but here's the deal. Education leads to sales. That's how you sell, right? If a customer needs um, a new truck, you need to educate them. They're like, hey, I think I want a new truck, but I'm not sure what to do. You would educate them on the problems they have. Uh, what what they are seeking and you would educate them saying, hey, this truck does this or whatever. But sales is rooted in education. If you are not educating, you are not selling. It is that simple. So you have a lot of pro anglers. You have a lot of people. They want to be secret and they don't, they don't want to go out of the way, the way to help. Well, here's the deal. That means you are not creating value for sponsors. You're not creating value for customers. Thus, your value is only in yourself because you're selfishly have selfish perspective, which isn't wrong, but you just have to remember people only care about themselves. So don't think that companies are gonna pay you to fish when you only care about fishing. You have to care about educating. You have to care about uh, the consumer. You have to care about meeting people where they're at. You have to care about meeting people's needs and wants. There are a lot of professional anglers that only care about themselves, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But a lot of pro anglers need to realize you're just always going to be playing with your own money. It's going to be really, really hard to create value and build your personal brand, build sponsorship dollars, which allow you to be on the water more and so forth without helping create value for people. If you step back and think about it, ESPN buys Bassmaster to try to increase viewership and bring in non-endemic money. There's not enough fandom, there's not enough viewership, so they sell Bassmaster. Bassmaster and Major League Fishing are forced viewership on cable television. Cable television goes out. Now, Major League Fishing National Professional Fishing League and Bassmaster are scrambling to try to figure out how to get more viewership so they can get more non-endemic money to help grow their sports and platforms. The reality is it's not happening because there's not enough fans in fishing. And then tournament anglers, there are some that do a great job of, of educating, creating value for companies and customers, but tons of them don't do that. They only care about fishing, so they're not helping grow the sport. There's not enough fandom to raise non-endemic money. So the sport of tournament fishing is dying. It's dying. There's no other way around it. I will say this. 
I've been extremely successful in this industry. If you look at how much money tournament anglers make annually, this is the metric. Now you could say, hey, that's not including sponsorship money. I assure you sponsorship money is not what you think it is. Uh, some people in their pride and ego will tell you, no, it's, it's good. I work in this industry. I've worked from every level of this industry. It's not. There are a few pros that do really, really well because they provide value to consumers and they provide value to businesses and their social medias and ability to market and sell is a great ROI. But 98% of them, it's not a great ROI because the fandom is not there. So to put things into perspective, I have been successful in the fishing industry. Why? Because I intersected people's needs and wants with education. If fishing is a pastime meant to be passed down, it's done through the median of education and people only care about themselves, people want to be educated. So as a fishing guide, fishing guides create value because they educate. They educate people. I would argue that fishing guides create the most value. The ASA said they want to improve experience and information in fishing. And this is also why I co-founded a company, fishtips.com, which is a platform where the average everyday guy, so once again, there's 55 million people that buy fishing licenses. One million of those are hardcore deep state tournament anglers. They only have their eyes on themselves. This is like talking about this, they're freaking out right now at the thumbnail. I don't even care about that. And some of them are, are followers of this channel. I'm sorry, truth bombs explode. But the reality is we created a platform where the average angler, uh, the guy who gets out once a month, twice a month, his kids play travel ball. Uh, he, he has a nine to five. He's got, he goes to church, whatever. He gets once or twice a month to go fishing. He just wants to have success. He sees value in being educated, being, helping him figure out how to catch more fish and have more memorable experience, uh, more memorable experiences on the water. And that's where fish tips has, uh, created value. We have a lot of pro fishermen and a lot of guides on fish tips helping do this and supplement their income. So the future of professional bass fishing is grim. I don't think there's going to be national level professional tournaments uh, unless you combine one league and somehow they figure out how to create viewership, an unbelievable viewership model in the digital age. Um, it's going to be really hard for professional fishing to exist. And if it does exist, it will exist under the capacity of tournament professionals uh, will only be playing with their own money, which once again is totally okay if they're okay with it. Uh, but what tournament professionals and professionals across the board or aspiring professionals have to realize is it's not a financially suitable venture if you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna get into professional bass fishing and knock it down and make tons of money. Those days are far gone. Kevin Van Dam, uh, Ike and Nelly's, Skeet Reese's back when ESPN had money. There was investors throwing lots of money. Man, you could really do well back then. Those guys were the media of the sport. They were the tournament professionals of the sport. There was multiple revenue streams encompassed within that. Man, those days are long gone. If professional fishing, professional tournament organizations survive, it will be a very costly uh venture where most of the money if not all the money is spent within the tournament organization it's the professional fishermen's money that's going around which is pretty much what's going on right now uh with very minimal viewership and fandom so anyways i don't i didn't want this video to be grim uh, i wanted it to be real and honest and really i wanted to challenge the thinking of fishermen like hey if you want to be in this industry it's based on education. It's a pastime, a conservative pastime meant to be passed down. It's done through the median of education and people only care about themselves. So you have to create an education product that is viable. And by the way, the YouTube, you're like, oh, I'm gonna do it on YouTube. Good freaking luck. I'm telling you, I have tons of friends who have monster YouTube channels. Milliken being one, Colin J, Ty Burger with Bass Fishing Headquarters or Bass Fishing HQ. Dude, it is unbelievably hard, if not impossible, because once again, man, way back when, when YouTube first started, 
and you created content, your content had mass viewership. If you liked fishing or the outdoors, YouTube literally would send your content to those viewers. Now it's such a saturated market. It's digital. Everybody can watch people like me who's got 20,000 subscribers and other guys who have 40 or 50,000 subscribers. It's parceled out. It's a super saturated market. It's almost impossible to grow in that capacity. The reality is I believe the future of fishing, growth of fishing, will be in niche specific regional markets. It will be done by guides educating those markets and creating income streams for themselves uh, through service, whether it's digitally like our platform does on fishtips.com or personally with their time, uh, just like it's done guiding. Uh, but anyways, guys, that is the state of the industry. That's the future of the industry. And that is where we're at. So I would love to hear your thoughts, opinions, and comments down in the comment section. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments. And I appreciate you guys a ton for watching the video. Till next time. See you guys.